Hey everyone, this is Cody, and today on Astro Blender, I'm going to be showing you my results with the OptoLong L Extreme filter on fast telescope systems like the Celestron F2 Rasa. That being said, I think the results might surprise you, so let's go ahead and jump right into it. Now, the OptoLong L Extreme is a dual narrowband filter. It has a 7 nanometer doubly ionized oxygen band, or O3, and a 7 nanometer hydrogen alpha band. Now, the optimism around this filter is huge, and that's really why I got one. I was really excited when I ordered this thing and to get it and start trying it out. I've seen some pretty amazing images taken by it and Optolong has, you know, built a name for themselves for making really good filters. The nice thing about this though is you can shoot with a color camera and get a color image in one night. So if you're like me and you don't have tons of time on your hands and you don't have the time to shoot monochrome, this should give you some pretty good results. At least that's what I was thinking when it came to a high speed telescope. So I wanted to start this off and talk about my first few nights experience with the Optolong L Extreme on the Rasa. And it wasn't what I was expecting. I was really excited to get a narrowband filter and start getting a lot of that really pretty emission nebula uh, in the night sky and doing a ton of work with this, honestly. And the results surprised me a lot. So I started off by taking an image of the Veil Nebula, something I'm really familiar with imaging. And the whole thing turned out green for 120 second exposures. I thought that was really strange because with my L Enhance, uh, I did pick up some more of the reds, but this was pretty much straight green. So a lot of that O3 data was coming in. Uh, so the next night I, I packed up, kind of frustrated the night before. The next night I imaged the Elephant's Trunk Nebula and I went for five minute exposures. Now, five minutes on an F2 system is a lot of data. And I shot F2 for five minutes all night long. So I stacked about 60 of these things and I barely got anything. You can see that in this image right here, barely got anything. And it was really surprising to me. So the next night I thought, okay, I'm gonna go image the Heart Nebula, something relatively easy, has a lot of HA in it. And I didn't pick up anything with three minute exposures, three minutes on an F2 system. And I didn't really get any reds at all. So this got me to thinking, okay, well maybe you have a defective filter and the hydrogen alpha coating wasn't included. But that would be weird because I would assume Optolong has pretty good quality assurance. So I slewed over to the Dumbbell Nebula, and that's a planetary nebula, so I figured it's pretty rich in doubly ionized oxygen. Took a 30 second preview of that, lots of green again. So this got me then to thinking, okay, maybe the high speed system shifts the bands so much so that the hydrogen alpha is almost completely cut, but you still pick up the O3. So again, I went and imaged the Veil Nebula, same result, really, really green. So I'm a scientist and I thought, okay, now it's time to make a little experiment out of this and start testing things out. And the best way to do that was to use this filter on a slower focal ratio telescope. So I got my Schmidt Cassegrain, put on my F6.3 focal reducer, got my 80 millimeter guide scope, started getting everything balanced and slipped the, uh, the Optolong L Extreme into it and went out for a night of imaging. And specifically, what I wanted to do was use the same exact settings that I used on this camera and this telescope and take the same objects with the same exposure lengths and see what happened. Now, if this filter was good, you would expect to see less because at a slower focal ratio, you're not gathering that light as quickly as the F2 focal ratio. So if I'm not seeing red in the F2, I certainly shouldn't be seeing red on the Schmidt Cassegrain. And that's not what happened. So I went to the Veil Nebula and I recreated my green image and took uh, two minute exposures using the exact same settings, exact same camera, and there's a lot more red in it after two minutes. That should not happen if this filter is working properly at F2. Now one test isn't enough for me, so then I went over to the Elephant's Trunk Nebula and I took 10 five minute exposures. I didn't shoot all night because I didn't really see a need to, so I just shot 10 five minute exposures, and I pulled out more data on the elephant's trunk at f6.3 than I did at f2 in the hydrogen alpha wavelength. So that to me right there was pretty much the nail in the coffin showing that the L extreme does not really work well at systems that are f2. So at this point I was having a lot of fun with my Schmidt Cassegrain, so I woke up pretty early and switched targets to the Pac-Man Nebula. I took 25 minute exposures of that, pulled out a lot of hydrogen alpha. I went over to Orion and shot that and pulled out some hydrogen alpha as well. And you can see all these pictures. And you know, granted my focus wasn't that great and I wasn't really trying that hard, 
but the whole point of this was a test to see if I could get red, and I did. So again, just to kind of summarize all this technical jargon, I should not get more data out of an f6.3 telescope in the hydrogen alpha wavelength than an f2 telescope, but that's what was happening. Now in science, you really can't prove anything. You can only falsify things. And so for me, I falsified that I got a dud. I don't think my filter is defective anymore. I think it does do its job. And I think what's happening is those very narrow seven nanometer band passes are shifting. And the hydrogen alpha is barely getting anything. Cause I mean, it's not completely blocked, but you have to expose for a very long time to pick it up on the, on the F2 system. And then the oxygen three is also shifted, but it's still being captured. Now, when I switch to the F6.3 system, those band passes weren't shifted and the filter works as it should. So I don't think, you know, the L extreme is bad by any means. I just don't think it's optimized for shooting at F2. Now I'd really like to see if my results with the L extreme can be replicated. So if you have a fast F2 system like the RASA 8, or maybe a Hyperstar on a C8 and the L extreme, I'll uh, post my integration times and my image details below in the description and then see if you can replicate it. And if you can, well, that kind of helps me confirm that this wasn't really made for, for high speed systems. And if you get different results, I'd love to see that too. So leave a comment below if you go ahead and do that. You know, if not, no worries. Uh, but for now, I will just use my L extreme in my slower focal ratio telescopes and that's totally fine. I think it's still a wonderful filter. I had a really good time imaging with my Schmidt Cassegrain and I thought my images turned out pretty decently for just being tests. So I think this filter has a lot of potential to give you some really amazing images. It's just for this high speed application, it didn't work so well. But you know what? That's physics and sometimes there's just nothing you can do about it. So you can be frustrated and angry and sell your filter or you can say, hey, this is the limit of the filter and I'm going to use it for those other applications. And that's what I'm going to do. So again, if you have an Optolong L Extreme and a telescope that's F2 or F3 or even F4, let me know how it does. I'm interested in, in hearing your thoughts and what you were able to do with it. So I think that wraps it up for me today. As always, thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a great day and clear skies.